Welcome, first and foremost, to this Elevate event, the special uh, December Elevate event, How to Thrive in These Uncertain Times. So last week, we hosted this very same session to our private uh, community members last week. It was kind of a, a first run of this content. And today, uh, there's been some iterations uh, based upon the feedback, and I'm looking forward to sharing this important conversation. Uh, it's, 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 it's very clear that we are living in uncertain times, but we'll explore what that means as we go through this session tonight. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dan Aston Gregory, and uh, you'll hear a little bit about my story through tonight's session. Uh, but the quick, the quick overview is in the last couple of years, I've been creating content, commentating on the, uh, the pandemic and the response to it, and uh, looking at the medical side, the scientific side, the social, political, economic side, and then more recently launched Elevate to start to examine some of the more cultural and systemic issues that have um, really arisen as a result of the last two years, but uh, more so come to the surface. They were already there, a lot of these things. And it's our first year and uh, we've launched a, a podcast in a community and many of you, I'm sure, will be part of the community or at least aware of it. Uh, you'll learn more about it tonight. Uh, and our goal is really to help to elevate humanity and enrich the world. And that's our, our, our mission and our movement. So um, I'll talk more about that as we go through as well. Um, but tonight, uh, what you've got in store. So tonight, uh, I'll explain the structure for tonight. But this is more of a, a presentation, a webinar this evening, um, rather than one of our community sessions where we have uh, breakout rooms and open discussions. There will be opportunities for that at the end. And I'll explain that as we go through. Uh, but tonight I'll be sharing why I believe that the counterintuitive approach to doing the exact opposite of what most people are doing right now is the way to elevate beyond our present circumstances that we find ourselves in in this uncertain time. So I believe going the exact opposite direction to most people is actually the way that not only do we elevate beyond this, but we find a way to thrive. Now. We've got over 90 people in the room as, as it stands. Uh, we have got a couple of technical issues in, behind the scenes I hopefully have resolved. So we should have uh, closing on the 300 people by the end of this session. Uh, Felicity, you'll have to let me know in the comments if there's any problems with people getting into the room um, because uh, I, I did hope to handle some of those problems with Zoom, but uh, we, won't, we won't dwell on that. Um, so let me guess why you are here tonight. So I think it's likely to be one of three main reasons. And you can let me know in the comments whether I'm right as I go through this. But number one, I believe it's likely that you are here because you perhaps share some of the concerns that we have been speaking about, not only on the pandemic podcast, uh, but also on the Elevate podcast over the last 12 months. Now, I said last time I delivered this content that, you know, we used to just, and I remember, you know, those golden, you know, rose tinted days, when I was a young boy or a young man, and it seemed the only thing I really had to worry about in my youth was the weather forecast. And yes, okay, there's plenty of other things to, in your teenage years to worry about and such. But certainly when I was a younger child, it was really only the weather, whether it would get in the way of my play that I was really worried about. But now as an adult, we've got much more serious things to contend with, whether it's the erosion of civil liberties and human rights, whether it's government overreach and the suppression of a free society that we've witnessed on a global basis in the last two years, whether it's the increasing centralization of power and control, uh, both at government level and non-government level, whether it's the rise of authoritarian or technocratic governance, again, on a global scale, whether it's the lack of government accountability and transparency or the political turmoil or the latest prime minister, one of how many, I don't know. Whether it's the dominance of grand false narratives in the media and the concentration of power in media itself and their ability to shape our perception of the world, whether accurate or not. Whether it's the loss of privacy and the emergence of a surveillance state enabled by new technology and uh, an entirely new field of capitalism called surveillance capitalism or whether it's the potential for central bank digital currencies and the, on, the, the onset of social credit style systems off the back of them, whether it's the polarization of society or the collapse of social cohesion as the result of people being divided and polarized, whether it's COVID, whether it's Brexit, whether it's Donald Trump, whatever it, the, the flavor of the day is, society is becoming increasingly polarized. 
or perhaps it's the threats to the right to bodily autonomy and medical freedom that we've seen in the last couple of years, or the impact of the cost of living crisis or the economic recession or the geopolitical conflict and the potential threat of a nuclear war or supply chain disruptions or the climate issues and the rest. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Well, yes, then I am here because I'm concerned about one or more of those things, if not all of them. But I thought we were here to learn how to thrive, Dan. I thought this was an uplifting webinar, not a depressing uh, story. Well, you'd be right. <laughs> that is our aim. But, but it is my understanding that I think many of us are here because of these shared concerns. What I'd like you to do now, and I said that we will take some opportunities to participate within this. Let me know in the comments how these issues make you feel. You know, as I was going through that list, you know, what came up for you? Just tell me in the comments, write down how you felt as I was going through those, which, which of those core issues stood out? Is that why you're here? Tell me in the comments, in the chat, if you will, tell us how these issues make you feel or have made you feel as you've uh, lived through them and witnessed them. You know, how does it make you feel right now? How does it make you feel for our future? Let me know in the chat and uh, I'll be really fascinated to see just how these particular issues make you feel. Concerned, isolated, overwhelmed, angry, scared for the future of our children, uh, says Donna. Burned out, uh, it's hard to keep up, they're beating us down, says Cheryl. Uh, Lynn says yes, all of these issues. So does Caroline, all of the above, Helen. So we've got a lot of shared, um, we've got a lot of shared issues here, terrified. Uh, feeling disempowered, furious about it all, uh, loads of responses here, nervous says Jamie, scared for my family says Lynn, uh, feeling of impotence to control my own life, uh, yeah, so loads of clearly negative responses, no, no one is, is there anyone that's excited about any of these, <laughs> any of these particular issues? Uh, maybe there are, but actually I joke about this, but last week when I, or a couple of weeks ago when I gave a talk, uh, near me in Trowbridge at the Holt Village Hall where they host uh, monthly uh, events and speakers, I said now is a time to get excited because actually where there is a uh, challenge, where there are problems, I personally believe, and history has hopefully backed me up on this, is that where there is great challenges, there is equal or greater opportunities. And that is going to be one of my core messages as we go through uh, tonight's webinar. Now, the reason I started with these issues is because it's these things, as we've seen in your comments, that are contributing to the prevailing conditions of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So tonight's webinar is entitled How to Thrive in These Uncertain Times. So the reason I started here is I wanted to paint the picture of the uncertainty that we're facing. But I'll also paint as we go through this, this is whilst the, the problems have changed, I do believe there is no such thing as a unique problem. There is only a unique set of circumstances that surround the problems. And it's, it's clear to me that humanity has faced the challenges that underpin these things many times before, even if those problems that manifest in such a way are different. But the reality is that said, is that at no other point in history has civilization as we know it, become as complex and as fragile as it is today. And the reality is that the vulnerabilities of Western societies in particular, with regards to the, the pandemic response, uh, the, 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 the influence of new technologies, the geopolitical instability, the ecological crises, the polarization of people, the creeping rise of these unelected centralized powers, these are all contributing to this uncertainty. And some would say that we are approaching a tipping point within humanity where we'll either face a potential collapse into chaos or rise into a new phase of evolution. Now, quite clearly, our brand is called Elevate, which at its purest terms means to rise up. <laughs> so it is my hope that together we can help be part of that collective uh, rise into a new phase of evolution rather than a collapse into chaos. And it's that very hope, that very faith in that rise into a new phase of humanity that keeps me going every single day, because I believe that each one of us has the opportunity to be part of that change we wish to see. Now, <clears throat> I'll also put forward an argument tonight that it's not necessarily actually these issues that are the real problem. And that might make you think, well, <laughs> if it isn't these problems, then what is the real problem? Um, well, you'll see as we go through. Now, 
I can quite clearly see from the chat and from what I've shared uh, that the, the, there are a lot of us here who do share some or all of these concerns. However, you might actually be here for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> uh, which brings us back down to earth with what I call a FUD. That's not a misspelled FUD, that's a FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So when I refer to fear, uncertainty, and doubt or FUD today, that's what I mean. Every time I say FUD, I'm talking about fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So another reason why you might be here is because you saw the title of the event, How to Thrive During These Uncertain Times. And by the way, all of these things are have an impact on, on our lives, particularly right now. A lot of people are talking about the impact of the uh, economic crisis and the cost of living, which inevitably is going to pose challenges to people. So it may be that you're here tonight because you've got your own challenges in your life that you're dealing with, whether it's work or money, relationships, health, or anything else, and you're curious about how to break through these challenges and move ahead. Now, if you're going through personal challenges, I want to let you know that you are far from alone. Now, you can see in the subtitle, I put, has anyone ever met anyone of no problems? Now, I personally haven't. I've met people who've lied about having no problems, <laughs> but most people have things that they are going through, challenges, issues, problems at any given time. And if they don't have any problems, then I think they're not thinking big enough. That's my usual <laughs> default. But in most cases, if someone says they've got no problems, they're usually lying <laughs> or, or, or lying to themselves, at least. Now, as I said, I want to let you know, if you are going through challenges right now, you're not alone. I'm going through my own set of challenges right now. And it, you don't have to share your own particular issues in the chat like you did before. But let's level with ourselves here. If you are going through some form of struggle, no matter how big or small, type yes in the comments. You don't have to do this, I appreciate it's personal, but I often find in rooms like this, it's good for people to look around themselves and say, actually, I'm not the only one. <laughs> and I'll start by saying, yes, I've got multiple challenges right now. So if you're experiencing challenges, and look, lots of people saying yes. So if you came here tonight thinking, my goodness, I'm the only one suffering right now, look at the comments. Take some reassurance from the fact that you're not alone. Okay, you know, and, and, and actually the first step to change is actually taking responsibility for our own problems and actually sometimes simply stating out loud that we have a problem is to claim ownership of our problems. So thank you to those of you who have been honest. Thank you to those who have stepped up and you've, you, you've, you've recognized you have an issue. And again, I don't need you to be personal about your challenges. It's unique to us. Um, but you're not alone. And it's important when we come to events like this to realize that not only are we facing shared challenges externally, but we're also facing shared challenges individually. So the third thing is you're either here because you're, share, uh, you're here because you care about the same issues, you're going through personal challenges, or perhaps, or, and you're also seeking change or even transformation if you're feeling bold tonight. And I'm guessing by the title of tonight's webinar that most of you are probably also here because you want to learn how to elevate beyond these issues, whether personal or social or global. You want to rise above it all and find a way to contribute or create meaningful change. And lastly, there's potentially a fourth group. You might have just signed up because you had nothing else to do. You just saw it and you thought, I'm going to go check that out, see what it's all about. Well, Whatever your reasons are for being here, you're very welcome, and I look forward uh, to this session. But what I would like to know uh, in the comments is why are you here personally? Tell me why you're here tonight. Let me know in the chat why you have decided to show up tonight. Out of the three over 300 people that registered, we've got over 100 people in the room that have committed to be here. And I often say that the first step to change is making the commitment to do things that others aren't willing to do. And you've made the commitment here on a Thursday night, a dark, cold night if you're in the UK, to be here. Tell me in the chat why you're here. What are you hoping to gain from tonight's session? Um, to feel a sense of community, says Julie. Barbara says the word thrive attracted you. Lucy was intrigued by the title. Uh, let me know in the comment. Hope. Lynn's here for hope. Just curious. Already on my own path of major change, says Jane. That's fantastic. Want to see a difference and think this will help, says Rosie. Ali says, I want to, to get out of this slave system and into something more humane. Uh, Annie says, I've had my calling. Hayley says, to elevate, transform, and support. Curious and love. Curious and love you, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, optimism and empowerment. Shared belief. Looking for inspiration to find a better way. 
Uh, touching base is Alan. Good to see you again, Alan. Uh, I've woken up, says Laura. Great. What? Uh, literally, is it the morning where you are? <laughs> Just woken up or you woken up to what's going on in the world? You trust me, says Liam. Very kind of you to say. Thank you. Freedom. Looking for a way forward. Looking for hope and vision. So notice the energy shift when we turn our attention to change and seeking change away from what we were just talking about. What I'll talk about tonight is that difference in energy and how it can actually be, be, be something, how our energy can actually bring us down or how it can help us rise up. Now, tonight's session is for you, whether you're here because of one of those reasons I've shared or one of the reasons you've outlined below, is for these three reasons. And you're in the right place if you want to take charge of your own future, you want to feel more resilient in the face of current challenges, whether your own or the world challenges that we're facing, and that there's some level within you, there's a desire to contribute to something bigger than yourself and actually play a part in bringing about the change you want to see in the world. If any one of these things apply to you, then you're in the right place. And all those things you shared in the chat, share, uh, let me know that you, you, you are here for the right reasons. So tonight, as I said, I'm going to go for a presentation. And I'm going to continue to invite you to participate in the chat as you've done. But we will have some Q&A and discussion at the end where I'll come on the camera and we'll have a chance to discuss together. But I want to start by saying uh, why I think this is important right now. Now, I'm a fan of rock music. And Bob Dylan, one of my uh, family favorite artists, said, the times, they are a changing. And as I wrote that, I put the song on so I could really embed that feeling. And in this instance, the times aren't necessarily changing for the better. But the real problem is that most people or many people right now are feeling disempowered or falling victim to the fear, the fear, uncertainty and doubt, the FUD, uh, because it's, it, which is very reasonable. You know, there is a lot happening right now. And we live in a time where we live in 24 seven news flash. Everything's breaking news. Everything's sensationalized. Everything is uh, we're always on and it's almost impossible to escape these challenges, let alone deal with our own challenges. <laughs> you know, how do we create the mental capacity to deal with our own problems when all this is happening in the world? That's certainly our feeling I feel on a daily basis. Now, this FUD, this fear, uncertainty and doubt and disempowers us. It takes us away from focusing on solutions. It makes us feel more apathetic, which is why when I asked at the beginning, how do these Issues make you feel and all those things, anger, frustration, despair, disempowered, stuck, versus when we talked about why you're here and there's all those things, right? hope, inspiration, faith, vision, you know, all of these positive sentiments is actually what leads us on a path towards that change that we're looking to create. Yet the world we live in will continue to breed and thrive upon uncertainty. So how we break three from that uncertainty is really the crux of what tonight is about. Because ultimately that uncertainty leads to anxiety. It leads to less joy, it leads to less focus and it leads to less action. And I think we'd all agree this, this is a time for more action than ever before, at least uh, very, very specific action to tackle the issues that we're facing in the world. And what's very interesting is it, it can take away our joy. I mentioned that. And we asked the question, I asked the question in our community just recently. And I asked, you know, I said that it feels to me that courage is absent from society right now. And courage is to not uh, is to not um, avoid fear. It's it's not that you're not fearful or afraid. Courage is actually to act in spite of fear. But I ask, what else is absent from society right now? And there were some really fascinating answers, and some of them have already come up in the comments. Things like humility, you know, more hum more humane society, this, this this sense of humanity. But one of our members said, joy, joy is absent in society right now, and that really struck me. Because you can feel it when you walk down the street. I mean, I'm used to feeling it when I used to go to London for work and I'd go on the tube and it's like glum faces. But now everywhere I go, there's this dead energy. Where is the joy gone? And that's what happens under the conditions of fear, uncertainty and doubt. And we've lived through years now. It is years of fear, uncertainty and doubt. Which leads, unfortunately, to apathy. The very thing we need to do is rise up in the face of those fears and actually take action. But unfortunately, it's uncertainty itself that keeps us paralyzed. Or worse, or worse. And, and th there are three things that can result from excess fear. One, fundamentalism. And fundamentalism means an unwavering attachment to a set of irreducible beliefs. 
you know, these fundamental belief systems that aren't necessarily attached to reality. It leads to this kind of more fundamentalist view of the world in extremes. Similarly, radicalism. Radicalism is also taking things to extremes. We see these playing out under fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Or nihilism. Nihilism is where we become relentlessly negative or cynical, uh, and that trying to do anything is completely pointless. That's the that's sense of nihilism. That's nihilism for you. And I think we probably all felt elements of those, all of those things <laughs> at a certain point, because fear pushes us to the extremes, it takes us to the outer edges of the bell curve, the outer edges of the Overton window, and it comes to our conversation. And if I asked you the question, you know, has anyone come across an example over the past few years, let alone the past few years, the past few days, of where it's dark out there. And I'm not talking dark in terms of the night sky. I'm talking about the dark energy and how people are feeling and how people are going to these extremes. And they are worrying about what these issues could manifest into the worst case scenarios. And I've, I've seen this many times before, you know, where we, we come across challenges and we end up uh, visualizing or imagining in our head what this worst case scenario could be. And that's what we start to talk about. Now, if you haven't seen any of those worst case scenarios, I'm guessing that you haven't logged into Telegram at any time recently. But Telegram to me is like a breeding ground for those things, fear, uncertainty and doubt, which does lead to those more extreme ways of thinking. So when we break free from the grand narratives, and many of us are here because the grand narratives of the last couple of years have led us to losing trust in media, government, major institutions, world leaders. And we'll often turn to other sources to try and find a new narrative to quell the stress and to restore the certainty. Ultimately, when, 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 we, when we break free from grand narratives, we're looking to restore certainty in an uncertain environment. And that leaves us feeling vulnerable. Uh, and that's where we turn to alternative media. You may have turned to the pandemic podcast looking for new narratives, looking for a different explanation. However, where grand narratives break down, as they have done over the last couple of years, this is also fertile ground for sensationalized and fearful narratives, which often take hold as people search for the, uh, the certainty uh, in, in the environment that we're facing. And these narratives can become crippling, they can become disempowering, they can become false. And unfortunately, uh, it, it takes us into further fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Let me know in the chat if you've come across any media, alternative media, telegram groups, content sources that lead you to feeling even more. <laughs> you know, we, we tune out from mainstream media, turn into alternative media. Let me know in the chat if turning to some other sources of media has led to you feeling even more fearful or uncertain, or even worse. <laughs> Let me know in the chat because I just find it fascinating. We did a survey on this recently, and many have said that. You know, they're tired of all the sensationalism. It's making things worse. You know, people are, are taking things to these extremes. It doesn't mean there isn't some truth in those extremes, but actually when we live there, it starts to become our reality. And that's, that's where we become really disempo uh, disempowered. So my goal tonight is to help you to do uh, just what I've described, to break free from the fear, uncertainty and doubt in order to find a way forward. And by doing so, begin to thrive in the face of uncertainty rather than become a victim of it. Now, you're gonna get the most out of tonight's session if you give your full focus. Make sure you're somewhere quiet if you can, turn off the TV. I mean, if you haven't done that already, <laughs> I'm talking more generally <laughs> than just tonight. Turn off the TV, uh, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, shut down any other browser windows, get ready to take some notes, grab a pen, get comfy. Uh, we're really gonna to start to get into it. So. Are you with me so far? Are you with me so far? Let me know in the comments if you're ready to rock. Yeah, there's lots of, yes. Lucy says yes, Claire says yes, Hilly says yes. Okay, let's do this. Let's start to talk about the big problem. Let's dance with uncertainty. You see, I said a moment ago that to, to be courageous is, it, it is not the absence of fear. One of the greatest analogies I've ever had in my own uh, last decade uh, with some of the mentors that I've worked with, they, they teach me that Fear will never go away because it's actually an inbuilt survival mechanism. And I'll talk more specifically about that as we go through. He said, what you need to do is learn to dance with the fear, learn to play with the fear, learn to find a different energy with fear. So tonight we're going to dance with uncertainty because there's two types of uncertainty. Number one, soft uncertainty, which is inner uncertainty. It's the uncertainty you feel inside yourself. It's the uncertainty I can remember feeling most strongly 
the moment <laughs> before I went live, my first video that, where I commented on the pandemic for the first time back in August 2020, the nerves inside of me thinking about what will think, what people will think, what will my business colleagues, my customers think when I do this? You know, they're going to say stick to the stick to the business, Dan. Don't get involved in the controversy of the politics. You know, all that nervousness that came up. That's the internal uncertainty. But then we have what's called the hard uncertainty, which is external uncertainty, which is all the things that we began with. And both, both of these have a negative effect on our psyche. So finding ways to handle both types of uh, uncertainty is actually key. And that doing, in doing so, we can become confident in the face of this uncertainty rather than fear for it. That's when we can really start to dance with uncertainty. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that change is not the new normal. You know, we've heard this term new normal over and over again over the last couple of years. I wanna be clear that change is not the new normal. Change is the only constant. Life is always changing. We're always growing and dying. Change is the only constant. And despite the fact we've lived our entire lives with change, every day there is change, every moment there is change. Somehow, in the world that we live in, this change can create a heightened level of fear. Right now, that's, that's, that's the pervasive atmosphere that we're experiencing. Yet that change is always there. And even better, where there is change, there is opportunity. Where there is problems, there is opportunity. And where there is challenges, there is opportunity. Whether that's personal challenges, or whether it's external challenges. And again, a wise mentor once said to me, if you feel like you're breaking down, now there is a time to get excited. Why? Because a breakdown, or being on the verge of a breakdown, is often the first sign of a breakthrough. And I think right now, when I said at the beginning that we are on that precipice of whether society will collapse into chaos or whether it will rise into a new phase of evolution, I believe that we are at that point of breakthrough. Things may have to get worse before they get better, but I believe we're embracing that point of uh, breakthrough. Now, if we leave things to chance and hope that change is automatic, well, the truth is it is. But... Will that change go in our favor? Will it create the kind of outcomes that we're, wait, we, we're wanting to see? Well, the reality is opportunity is everywhere. And I've seen this on a slide in this way many times over my business career. And some people will see opportunity is now here. And others, when they read this, will see opportunity is nowhere. I'm curious to see what you saw. But the reality is opportunity, if we look for it, is always here. And we need to start talking about opportunities because the rest of the world is talking about how the world is in collapse, how it's in chaos, how the economy is shrinking. Reality is the economy isn't shrinking. There is more money in the economy today than there was yesterday. Banks around the world are constantly printing money. Okay, that's a simplistic view of the world. Yes, I know that there's more factors involved, but the, the, the ultimate answer is there is more money on this planet than there was yesterday, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Money is always expanding. But yet we're talking about recession. We're talking about contraction. And one of our podcast guests, Frank Freddy, talked about how the movies, the movies in the 30s, 40s and 50s and even 60s were talking about these powerful moral journeys that often led into a happy ending, the hero's journey. Whereas now the movies all end in this bleak Armageddon or apocalypse. And it somehow surmises the situation we find ourselves in. So it's unsurprising that people are seeing fear, uncertainty and doubt over opportunity. My goal tonight is to tune you into opportunity. And the politicians aren't talking about opportunity. The communities we surround ourselves with aren't talking about opportunity. Yet historically, it's those, and entrepreneurs and innovators know this, it's those that look for opportunities are the ones that find it. So tonight, I want to kind of wire your mind into looking for opportunity and embracing uncertainty to find certainty in the constant of change. Because the world isn't pure chaos. If you want to learn to, how to tie a bow tie, which is why there's a bow tie on the screen, you can find instructions on how to do it. It may not be easy. I still haven't really mastered it. I can tie a regular tie, a bow tie. I'm not so good at But if you want to learn how to do it, 
whilst it may feel uncertain at first, learning to drive, learning to turn bow, tie bow tie, we can learn how to do it, even when we're uncertainty. If you want to get fit, you know, eating less, moving more is generally going to help you get fitter. So even in the face of uncertainty, the world is never in pure chaos. We can always bring order to the chaos around us. And actually, when we talk about opportunities, for any of you who's ever started a business or started a new relationship, it might be challenging, but it's these things that bring us the greatest satisfaction, growth, and joy. And all of these things come in the face of uncertainty. But why don't most people look for opportunity? Why do people fall victim to uncertainty? Why don't we all look for opportunity? Why don't we all see change as a driving force that could be positive? Well, the hard reality is, is that our survival instinct is hardwired. Historically, we are activated by external threats. You know, back in the earliest days of humankind, we would you know, be chased by wild animals and that would lead us to immediately sense fear, anxiety and stress as a survival mechanism to protect us from an external threat. You know, these, these, these triggers activate what's called the sympathetic nervous system. They direct all our attention to eliminating the threat. Uh, but the problem is when we are exposed to repeat and overwhelming threats or challenges or uncertainty, it can lead us to freeze, break down, which can lead to that despair or apathy which is why during times like this, where there is great uncertainty, most people, most people will take the path of buckling down, weathering the storm and hoping that things will change. Because when you are bombarded with uncertainty, it literally overrides your base instincts to thrive and it takes you into that survival instinct. It activates the sympathetic nervous system. The good news is, we aren't just wired to survive, we are also wired to thrive. It is also an inbuilt mechanism. And our thrive instinct is activated by, guess what? Opportunities and the associated feelings of excitement, of passion, of joy, of enthusiasm. A lot of those positive emotions you shared when you said why you're here. And what this does is it triggers the other part of our nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system which allows our mind to actually broaden its perspective, to ponder, to ideate, to create, and to collaborate, and to expand our view of the world, to expand our sense of possibilities. But it's very difficult to do that when we're constantly in fear, uncertainty, and doubt, because that sympathetic nervous system is triggering and overriding our thrive mechanism. It's usually drowned out by the uncertainty. But as I mentioned, we're hardwired to survive in this way. You know, it's, it is there to ensure our survival. Uh, and over the millennia, you know, this survival mechanism that originally kept us safe from external predators has now become part of our social fabric. It's like a powerful radar that operates constantly when we're awake and even when we're asleep, detecting, responding to threats, whether they are physical threats, whether it's our ego, whether it's psychological or whether it's external realities. Our nervous system doesn't know the difference between an emotional fear and, and an external threat. So that's why the constant source of news, negativity, is actually triggering that same fight or flight mentality that shuts us down and shuts off that thrive, that inbuilt natural thrive mechanism. And particularly where we can't find solutions to our problems, we can enter into despair and demotivation. And I'm sure many of you have experienced that. I certainly have. But that's why we see widespread apathy, despite the multitude of challenges we face today. And furthermore, <laughs> In that type of environment that we've lived in for the last couple of years, if you put a hundred or several thousand people together in a government, for example, these fear-based tendencies tend to reinforce one another and you get groupthink. And we all know what happens when people do the same thing in the same way around the world in the face of an external threat. We face the exact problems that we're facing today as a result of that mass formation, herd mentality and group identity, groupthink that surrounded that fear. So what can we do? What can we do? Well, it's story time. Early on in 2020, I'd started, as you, many of you know, creating content and speaking about what was going on in the world. And one of my friends said, Dan, stop troubling yourself with all these big problems. Why don't you focus on what you control, what you can control? 
you know, I really, as you know, <laughs> we created 500 pieces of content in the space of 18 months. But at the beginning, other than the criticism I was getting from my friends and family, <laughs> which was a joy in itself, um, someone said, don't trouble yourself with these big problems. Why? Because you should focus on what you can control. That way, you know, you protect yourself from all this chaos. Now, on one hand, well, they were right. You know, the scale of the problems we're facing, the big challenges, absolutely, is nigh on, nigh on impossible, if not impossible completely for any one individual to change these external realities by ourselves. You would have to have a massive ego to think that any individual can change any one of these major issues all by themselves or be deluded <laughs> or illusions of grandeur. But what if we could influence these problems rather than control them? What if we could influence positive change? Now, while some of these problems that we started out talking about today when we looked at the shared concerns may seem insurmountable, they might do. When we look at them, we think, how on earth? Because it isn't just one big problem. Even if all of us got all our collective attention on trying to solve one of those problems, we might make some progress, but it's still a big challenge. Yet there's an entire list, and I couldn't even fit them all on one page. But has there ever been an individual or group of individuals throughout the course of history who have become renowned for standing up against the dominant culture or a clear set of problems or an oppressor and they've managed to spark change they've managed to catalyst be a catalyst for a revolutionary period yes of course there has has there ever been an entrepreneur or an innovator who's come up with an idea or a new product or a service that's completely changed how we live? The answer is yes. So the question becomes then, if we can't control our external reality, we can't change these big problems by ourselves, the big question becomes, how do we start to influence it? How do we contribute to change? How can any one of us step up either to solve our own personal challenges or the challenges in the world around us? What separates those that end up in the history books, the Mahatma Gandhis, the, the, the Mandelas, those who build great companies, those who change how we live, shift the culture? What separates those that end up in the history books and everyone else? Well, <laughs> I don't have all the answers to this. If I did, if I had it all figured out, I'd be one of those people. And as hard as I've been trying, I don't even have a Wikipedia page yet, <laughs> despite the controversy and trail of destruction I've left over the last couple of years. Um, <laughs> but what I do know is that whilst we may all come from different backgrounds and upbringings, different family life, the great leveler is that we all have the same 24 hours in a day. So it's what we do with this time and the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and the world that we live in that truly makes the difference to the quality of our lives. And people think that those who move the world, those who make the greatest difference are somehow different or special and that it's not possible for us to achieve such an impact that those great people who've gone before us have done. And that this particular type of impact, this type of influence, this type of contribution to the world as we know it, is somehow reserved for other people. How do I know that people think this way? Well, because it's exactly how I used to think. I always used to think that those who make the greatest difference in the world are somehow special or different. And who am I to even attempt to make a difference in the world? What do I have that those people had? Because we put ourselves in a pit when we put others in a pedestal. When we look at other human beings like there's some sort of high and mighty being. Now, don't get me wrong. They may have some special talent, skills or luck, uh, <laughs> special upbringings, set advantages. But ultimately, they have the same 24 hours, as I said. But not only as I was growing up did I not believe that I could ever make such a difference, but I almost felt entirely powerless in my own life. And that I was simply a cog in the machine where we go to school, we go to work, and then we die. The system is set up that way. I didn't see any other way. I didn't know there was any other reality available to me. Now, whilst I did reasonably well in school, 
My school reports always said that I was the quiet kid in the corner, had plenty of friends, yes, but I had no self-confidence whatsoever. And that lack of confidence lasted into my mid-20s. I'm 39 now. But for the majority of my life and a good part of my adult life, I struggled with self-doubt, self-esteem issues, self-image. I'm a skinny redhead. <laughs> it's cool to be a skinny redhead these days. You got king, you, you got heirs to the throne <laughs> and all that. <laughs> and the red hot 100. There's, there's, there's calendars made about redheads these days. Not when I was a kid. <laughs> But finally, something happened in my life that led me to decide that enough was enough. And I resolved that I could no longer live with that self-doubt and that sense of powerless. And that I had to take responsibility and find a way to make a change. And that was in my mid-20s. And I essentially spent the next decade working upon myself, reading books, going to seminars, attending things like this, trying to figure out how to thrive let alone in any environment, let alone uncertain environments, working with coaches, working with mentors, so that I could finally develop the confidence and the courage to start working on the kind of life and impact that I always previously believed was reserved just for other people. I always looked with admiration but on some level, envy of those who had lives that I dreamed of, thinking that it's not for me. But that period of self-development, that period of inner growth, that period of focus, it gave me the confidence to step, start to do things differently. And in 2012, I finally quit my corporate career and left it behind. I started a business, and whilst I had many setbacks during that time from bad relationships to failed businesses, Went through a period of stress, struggle, and sacrifice. But that stress, struggle, and sacrifice is actually the thing that built me. And it's actually the thing that gave me the resilience that I need now to do what I do today. It was the deep inner work and the outer action that followed that led me to developing the courage and the confidence from that quiet kid in school who used to be taunted for being a skinny lad with red hair to on the 14th of August, 2020, 10 a.m. in the morning, pull out my phone, stare it in the eyes, and stand up to power and say my piece about what was happening in the world because I had fears for our children. I had fears for our future when I saw what was happening around the world during the COVID chapter and how children were literally becoming isolated from each other, not only isolated each other, in some countries kept in perspex boxes away from each other because of this external fear. I decided to stand up to power and take on some of the biggest issues that I've seen ar arise over the course of the last couple of years from initially speaking out on a simple live video on that day, that morning, where I was racked with nerves and uncertainty as I spoke about the inner uncertainty, but I said, enough's enough. That video was shared 5,000 times in 48 hours. It went on to reach over a million people alone. To then launching the pandemic podcast, which in itself reached over 15 million views around the world and subsequently ended up putting myself at the forefront of an activist movement in the UK that has had a ripple effect upon the rest of the world. I'm invited to speak at an event in Canada and America in the new year about what we've done here in the UK. But ultimately I'd found my calling, but more importantly, I'd found a way to develop an inner resolve that was bigger than any of the problems that I perceived in the world. And I believe that when our dreams, when our dreams are bigger than our problems, that's when we really start to find courage. That's when we really start to dance with uncertainty and fear. Now, the problem is when we're living in fear, uncertainty and doubt, that literally psychologically, due to our nervous system and our hardwired connection to survive, it shuts down that ability to dream. So that's why I say there is great opportunity in the challenges we face right now. And that opportunity is to shut off from that uncertainty and to find that resolve to dream again. I believe that now it's time to dream again. And it's times like this and in a recession, more millionaires and billionaires are built in recessionary times than any other period. There is more opportunity, but it's those, and we're not here to talk about money or finance or business tonight. We're here to talk about how we find the opportunity to rise above our challenges and learn to dream again. Now, the best part is, and I say this with humility, I genuinely believe after stepping up in 2020 and, and, and doing everything we've done in the last couple of years, I'm really proud of what we've achieved, but I really feel like we're just getting started. 
And I don't say what I say tonight to impress anyone. It's not my character, but I want to impress upon you that the decisions that we make every day can alter the course of our own history as well as the course of history itself. We have the power in a single decision to alter our own reality and our entire future. Now, no matter what is going on in the world, we always have the ability, we might not think it with all the chaos, but we always have the ability to control what we focus on. It's what we choose to focus on every single day that will determine whether we make a difference in our own lives and the world around us, or whether we fall victim to the uncertainty that so many will over the next year or so and beyond. But I believe that we all have the capacity, the potential to make a difference. Even if you don't feel it yourself, even if you resonate with my story of that quiet child that sits on the sidelines. Uh, you've watched me in so many different environments, many of you who followed my journey the last couple of years. I'm no longer the quiet kid that sits on the sidelines. You can't actually shut me up now. My team will tell you that. And you were a testament to this now. I've been rolling for nearly an hour. <laughs> I'm no longer the quiet kid on the sidelines. And if that's you, metaphorically or, or, in, or, or in a literal sense, know that we each have the capacity and ability to make a difference far beyond ourselves when we allow ourselves to do so. It's, what, it's not just the 24 hours we have in a day, it's the decisions we make and the stories we tell ourselves about what's possible for us. But unfortunately, there's a big difference between what we can do and what we will do. I believe we are innately filled with infinite potential. We have the potential to do so much but it's what we will do that makes the difference. And tonight, part of my goal is to turn some of the shoulds in our lives into musts, to inspire a deep sense of possibility by sharing some strategies tonight that will hopefully help you thrive during these uncertain times. So, are you ready? Let's do this. Let's talk about how to thrive. Let's move away from the problems that we're facing in the world just for a little bit this evening. Just have this cocoon, this space tonight to dream again, to think about how we can thrive. Tonight, I've got three very simple steps to thrive and they are unbelievably simple. There's nothing new here that you wouldn't have heard before. I'm sorry to disappoint. I don't have a radical answer. <laughs> I have a simple set of strategies that when implemented over and over again, will make a difference in your life. Some of these things are common sense, but not everything that's common sense is common practice these days. <laughs> I don't think any of us need to be reminded of that. So let's get to it. Let's take notes. Number one, control your focus. We often experience anxiety and stress when we feel our life is spinning out of control. And it's no, it's no surprise with the chaos in the external environment that many of us may feel like our lives are out of control more than usual right now. But the reality is every single moment, our brain is answering three different questions, whether we know it or not. Number one, it's asking us, what should we focus on? Number two, it's asking, what does all this mean? And number three, it's asking, what can I do? Consciously or unconsciously, you're asking those three questions, what to focus on, what does it all mean, and what can I do? Let's start with what to focus on. If we're only focused on negativity, we're literally priming our minds for more negativity. I've mentioned a couple of mentors that I've worked with over the years, not by name, but by the lessons they've shared with me. And one of my early mentors said, Dan, you've got to tune out from CNN. You may have heard me say this on the podcast. You've got to tune out from CNN. I'm like, I don't even have cable. I'm not watching CNN. <laughs> he said, it's not about the channel. It's not about the news channel. It's about constant negative news. CNN stands for constant negative news. Most of us on this call aren't a fan of social distancing. I can tell you that for a fact. But we've got to start social distancing ourselves from negativity. Limit the news you consume. Yes, stay informed. But what's the minimum viable dose to stay informed so that you don't enter into negativity? One of my other mentors, not directly, but someone I've learned through listening to his words for many years, a gentleman called Ramdas is a spiritual teacher, and whether you're spiritual, religious, or otherwise, it's, it's not the point. But he used to say he used to meditate for 15 to 20 minutes before reading the news, just so he could be centered and focused. So when he read the news, he didn't get disturbed by the, the immediate knee-jerk reaction that comes with the things that we're reading. 
And I can tell you, every time I log into Twitter, it doesn't take long. Less than a split second, boom, trigger. <laughs> so maybe I should take heed of that lesson a bit more. <laughs> but it's time to tune out from CNN. It's time to social distance ourselves from negativity. Because why? Why would we need to do this? It's everything I've talked about. It puts us back into that state of survival rather than the capacity to thrive. And it's also a reality right now that most news is sensationalized, fear-based, and probably bias-ridden. It's not even a reflection of the truth, even if we think it is. And we've got the news on our phone 24-7, triggering our fears, making us anxiety, uh, triggering our anxieties, and keeping us and holding us back from doing the things we need to do to solve the personal challenges that we're going through, but also to make the difference in the world that we dream of. This is about taking a step to protect yourself mentally and emotionally from too much negative information. This is ultimately what it's about, but not just that, but to start plugging into something positive that inspires and uplifts you. Now type in the comment, type yes in the comments. If there's anything that I've said tonight in this session that already has left you with the greatest sense of inspiration and hope so far, and we haven't even got into the, into the strategies yet, you know, tell me yes in the comments. If you've already at some point during this session, yes, yes, always. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Yes, Long. Uh, yes, Jane. Very inspiring. Anna. Thank you. Very kind, Jane. <laughs> I loved it. CNN. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Inspiration is always available to us, but so is negativity. It's what we choose to focus on. We can't, con we can't control the thoughts that come into our heads, but we can control the thoughts that we dwell upon. But unfortunately, this high level of possibility thinking the idea that we should dream and be inspired, unfortunately, doesn't naturally develop itself and sustain itself in society. It doesn't take much to figure that out. There's not much inspiration in society right now. So it comes down to us. Rather than looking outside ourselves, we can, and I do myself, look for inspiration outside myself. But often, more importantly, we've got to find it within ourselves. It's important that we find ways to raise our energy rather than just consuming the constant negative news, the CNN. Consume positive content that moves you emotionally, not just intellectually, because when we're being informed, we're thinking with our co cognitive mind, we need to move ourselves emotionally so we get into that state of excitement, joy, of passion, sense of possibility. And, uh, you know, we've been thinking about what 2023 is going to look like for Elevate. I've been immersing myself in entrepreneurial podcasts again, creative, creative thought, really uplifting personal development content. And it's just changed how the I can feel my brain coming alive again. I can feel that passion like lifting up inside of me again because I'm tapping out of all the negative news. And, you know, having taken that advice from that mentor of mine where he said, tune out of CNN, I literally in 2009 got rid of my television and I didn't have one again for over a decade. I only got it because watching Netflix on your laptop's a bit of a pain, <clears throat> first world problems. But then here I am two years on, like two years after the beginning of the pandemic, like I'm immersing myself in news every day. I'm drowning myself in constant negative news. So we have to strike a balance. We have to tap into that positive inspiration. We have to find a way to stay informed. Yes, but we have to, if we only consume content about world events, then we'll get stuck in that negativity and we'll never get past it. We have to choose instead to seek inspiration. So when you choose what to focus on, you can control the meaning that you give to what's happening in the world. We have the ability not to necessarily control the events around us, but we have the ability to control the meaning around what's happening in the world. What does this mean? Well, we can choose to laugh at the politicians and the mainstream media. Better yet, we can ignore them. All of this madness will one day be a footnote in history that will be replaced by a new story, a new page, a new set of problems. Change is constant, remember. So rather than paying all our attention to the grand narratives of the day, it's important that we also pay attention to the inner narratives. The inner narratives. These are the stories that we're telling ourselves about the world and about the uncertainty in any given situation. Are we seeing things worse than they are or are we seeing things as they are? Are we falling into that trap of nihilism, fundamentalism and radicalism? Are we allowing ourselves into going into the dark depths of our mind? Are we going into the rabbit holes so deep that we can no longer see the light through the trees? Are we seeing reality as it is? Or are we seeing things worse than they are? Better yet, why don't we start to see things better than they are? That's not to manipulate the current reality and, you know, pump ourselves up with some rah-rah and pretend nothing's happening. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying let's create a vision for the future. 
Let's create a vision for a better tomorrow. That's how we create a better world, when we start to look at the world better than it is and start to make it so through our actions. Because the reality is what we think about is what we feel, and what we feel determines the actions that we take and the results that we see in the world. And if we're feeling constantly negative because of the negative thoughts that we're putting into our mind, then we'd be taking negative action and ultimately getting negative results. So if, like me, going through your own set of personal challenges, I've got, I've got a few. You trace it back. It probably started with some negative thoughts that resulted in negative feelings that led to negative actions further upstream. And now you have a set of negative consequences. It's time to flip the dial. Let's start thinking positively. And that's not, again, that's not, that's not avoiding the situation at hand. It's about finding inspiration so that we switch that thrive mechanism on with inside ourselves. So when you feel uncertain, ask yourself, what is the story I'm telling myself right now about the world? Is this story true? What's it costing me to fall into the trap of this story? And what's a better, more empowering story that I could tell myself right now? Because ultimately we have the opportunity when we control our focus to, to determine the meaning that we feel and experience in any given moment. And we can start to ask, what's a, more empower, what's a more empowering story that I could tell myself about myself and the world that we live in? And that's when we can start to move into opportunity thinking. And despite the speed I'm going at tonight, we need to sometimes slow down and realize the world isn't moving as fast as we think. And when we're present and we stop to take heed and see the world as it is, not worse than it is, then we can start to decide how we can make it better than it is. Which takes me to step three of the control your focus step which is to start asking yourself, what can you do right now? What simple action can you take to start chipping away at your own challenges and the challenges we're facing in the world? This is about giving yourself options. When we ask ourselves, what could I do right now? How might I? One of my favorite phrases whenever I'm stuck is to ask myself, how might I solve this? Because that question alone triggers our brain to consider, to ponder. We can't do that when we're in fear. When we're, in, when we're in a state of empowerment, we ask ourselves, how might I solve this? How might I solve this and enjoy the process even better? How might, I, <laughs> how might I solve this, enjoy the process and get results fast? Train your brain to start looking for positive answers. The reality is by doing so, we begin to expand our possibilities. And this is all about expanding our possibilities. How we thrive is we expand the options that are available to us. And that's entirely within our control. We're way more fruitful when we're in an empowered state. And the reality is the future, whether it's our own lives or the world that we live in, is yet to be written. And amongst all the uncertainty, we've got to get used to assessing this changing environment and making bold, empowered decisions about how to move ahead. It's the decisions that determine our destiny. Now, the hard fact is that most people don't want to think on their own. That's why most people bury their heads in the sand. They want the problem to go away. They want someone else to do it. They want someone else to tell them what to do. I get it. It's tough. It's tough taking responsibility. Freedom comes with great responsibilities. And if we want to be free, we have to be willing to take on the responsibility that comes with it. So to separate yourself from the crowd in these uncertain times, become one of the few that thrives during this time. You need to put yourself in a situation where you're always looking for more opportunities and you're more looking for expansion of your options. That means when you feel like you've only got one choice, the default path, start to think about what your options could be so that you can do A, B, C, or X, Y, and Z. And start to give, you opp give yourself opportunities in, in advance. The most successful entrepreneurs and business leaders, the ones that prosper in times like these are the ones that look ahead and start to anticipate what's coming so that they can take advantage of uncertainty rather than become a victim of it. Become a seeker of opportunities. By controlling our focus, we ultimately control uh, our opportunities. This is sovereignty. Now, what's the best way to expand your options? Number two, invest in yourself. I've got the wrong way around. <laughs> Number two, invest in yourself. Now, there are always financial opportunities in times of economic uncertainty like this. Cash in the bank gives you the option to take advantage of these opportunities, but not everyone has this. The greatest investment you can make is in yourself. Whether you learn a new skill, develop 
new expertise, start a new project, start learning about the problems you're trying to take on in the world, learn more about how to improve your health, learn more about how to improve your wealth, learn how to develop in a, in a piece. What skill or knowledge do you need to develop right now to solve your own personal challenges and achieve your own ambitions? Other than the time that we have in a day and the stories we tell ourselves, it's ultimately the skills and the knowledge that we have that enable us to add more value. And in business, at least, those who can add most value are the ones that prosper. How do we increase our own value? I'm not talking about self-worth. I'm talking about our own value and the ability to solve problems. We have innate capacity to learn. Step two, despite saying three, is to invest in yourself. Number three, build a support network. Get around inspirational people. Expand your circle of influence. We've talked about investing in ourselves to give ourselves greater opportunities because that's ultimately what investing yourself does. It expands your possibility. It gives you greater options. And in times like these, you can equip yourself with the skills and knowledge to have those opportunities. However, many opportunities come in the form of human beings, both personal and professionally. Connecting with new people helps us to connect to new ideas, perspectives, and opportunities and find solutions to our own problems. How many people on this webinar tonight have ever solved a problem because you shared it with someone else and they gave you an idea, a perspective, or a way of thinking about the same problem that shifted how you saw the problem and all of a sudden it became clear? How many of you have had that light bulb moment just by speaking to someone and they, 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 they helped you connect the dots and all of a sudden you could see the path ahead? I'm sure I'm not alone in having that experience. That's the power of connecting with other people. So whilst we're social distancing from ne negativity, we want to connect with inspirational people, uplifting people who can help us solve our challenges. Because when we start to see things from different angles, and every great innovator knows this, we become aware of more viewpoints. And, and by experiencing different viewpoints, we can start to see different ways to do things. And again, it comes back to that expansion of options and possibility. But here's the hard reality, and this is again another, this is, this, this is the literal words from another mentor of mine. She said, you become the average of the five people that you spend most time with, so choose wisely. Yeah, one of my first uh, leaders that I worked with in my first corporate career, that she was the one that shared that with me, and she said, if you want to get healthy, get around healthy people. You want to succeed in your career, get around people who are already ahead of you. If you want to thrive financially, get around wealthy people. You want to find in a piece, get around people who are the most harmonious, serene people you know. There's a strategy. <laughs> Figure out what they do, apply it to your own life, and that's how you will become uh, the effect of the network that you have. And another one of uh, my mentors, Rob Moore, he's been on the podcast. He says, your net worth is your network. And that might apply to you if you're thinking about finance or business, but the same is true. We don't have to restrict our net worth to finances, our net worth emotionally, love, harmony, peace. So make sure you're in a community that is not adding to the negativity or unnecessary fear. We want to be around people that inspire us, but also challenge us to break through our patterns, to challenge the status quo, to see our unconscious blind spots, to help lift us up. Surround yourself with positive, uplifting people that can help you grow. Now, one of the best ways to meet people, you might ask, is how do we do this? How do I find these inspirational people? Well, I'm sure tonight you're in a room of 100 plus. Over 100 people tonight are here because they share a shared set of concerns about the world, but they're here because they hold out hope for the future. I'm sure you'll find that sense of inspiration amongst most people in the room tonight, even if they don't feel it every single day. You know, we're all human. Going to events like these, joining new groups, starting something yourself. Uh, my wife and I and our boy, Zach, we're moving to Bournemouth in the new year. We're moving south from Bristol, where we're currently located. And I'm 100% going to be starting a new meetup group there so that I can meet a new peer group. You know, I don't want to move to a new town, a new city, and not know, where, you know, not know anyone that's going to help hold me to a standard, keep me up to uh, the level of inspiration. I need to do what I need to do. But also people out there who can challenge me, people out there 
You want to find the people, the movers and shakers who are, who've got ideas, they're doing things at a grander scale. So it can, it, can, it can rub off on my own thinking around how we can make a dent in the world. So build a support network is number three. I'm going to give you a final bonus. Again, none of these things are anything radically new, but common sense is not always common practice. So I won't ever say that enough. Now, self-care. Let me tell you why self-care is important. It's important to remember that the things that we do have control over are things like the simple habits that we complete for ourselves. So focusing on creating a self-care routine that helps you to cultivate your own sense of personal power and momentum at a time like this is more vital than ever. Now, often during times of uncertainty, we get into the anxious state and those things actually start the things that support us. And I can testify to this firsthand over the last two years, so busy with the pandemic podcast, flat out, you know, feeling into that intensity that some of the support things that kept me going in the first instance fell away as I became busier and busier. Do not do that. <laughs> this is my personal warning to you as much as it is a lesson to myself. We've got to cultivate those routines that bring our sense of personal power and momentum. Those are things that we control. So make a list of habits that you can complete every single day without fail. I was on a call recently, one of our community members, Kate Cook, she runs a nutrition network, very uh, powerful woman, very inspirational woman. Again, she's built an amazing network of nutritionists. If you're, if you're in that field, go check out Kate's work. If you're here tonight, Kate, hello. Thank you so much for having me recently. Again, being part of this inspired community, but she was talking about three simple changes that you can make to improve your nutrition on that call. It doesn't even have to be three simple changes. I worked with a business uh, about five years ago, their, their motto was one simple change. Find one simple change, one simple habit, one simple daily habit. So my top tips when it comes to self-care habits, think about your sleep, prioritizing exercise, eating well, journaling. If you've never journaled before, watch out. In the new year, we're going to do a, 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 a journaling challenge inside the Elevate Network. There's a, there's a book called The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. Let me know in the comments if you've ever read Julia's work, uh, The Artist Way. It's an incredible book. It's, it's essentially, a, it, pre it predates online courses. It's a 12-week self-guided course, really, more than a book. But uh, some, of the, some of the journaling, writing exercises in there are some of the most profound things I've ever experienced. But I have an app called uh, Evernote that I've had since 2013, and I've journaled nearly every single day my thoughts, my reflections, my challenges. Journaling is a great way to process our emotions. It's a great way to process our challenges. It's a great way to ask ourselves those questions that can choose, that can help determine our focus. Things like, what could I be excited about today? What am I most passionate about right now? You know, what are the opportunities that are available to me right now? Because unless we direct our mind to those questions, we never look for the answers. It's like Google, the better quality question you put in there, the better quality response you'll find. And unlike Google, we can control <laughs> our algorithms in our own mind to find the answers. If we seek deep enough to meditate, to breathe, to get into nature and to experience gratitude and gratitude is so important. Appreciation, deep appreciation. There is a there's an old adage that gratitude is the ultimate antidote to fear. And tonight we've been talking about fear, uncertainty and doubt. And if you feel depth of gratitude in your heart and soul in any moment you take the time to breathe and to go within and say what am I truly grateful about and believe me even in our most stretched and challenged state I'm sure there's always something even small that we can be grateful for and it's important to be grateful for the things that we take for granted like the fact that our heart beats every moment of the day <laughs> the fact that all these unconscious processes happen within us to keep us alive you've got nothing else to be grateful for just be grateful for the, your beating heart that keeps you alive so I invite you now to participate again in the chat. Let's have a go at this. Let's shift our state, state right now. Just take a moment for yourself. Put your hand on your heart if you want. Find something inside of you that you're really grateful for. It could be a moment. It could be a moment that something happened today. Today, my wife was bathing. Zach, my boy, he, he, he's, learned how, he's got this toy shark and he's learned how to squeeze it. It's one of these squeezy ones. He's learned how to squeeze it. He's squirting water across the bath and he's laughing laughing beautiful laughter like just belly laughter as a child that that pure innocence that joy so grateful for that moment just so beautiful so beautiful what a what a wonderful experience what do you I mean, see how i moved right that's to my core you can't fake that 
What are you most grateful for? Think about something in your life right now. Have your state shift. Join me in having that state shift right now. Close your eyes. Don't listen to my voice. Go within your body right now. Think about something you're grateful for. It could be your home. It could be your heartbeat. It could be the wonderful food you've eaten today. It could be the fact that you know you, you went outside and it was cold and icy, but you took a moment to appreciate how wonderful it is out here, how crisp and fresh it feels. You know, Take a moment now to, to, to find something within you that you're deeply, truly grateful for. It could be something in your past. It could be your family. It could be your upbringing. It could be a lesson that you learned. It could be something one of your mentors shared with you. And then I invite you to share it in the chat. Let's spread some gratitude tonight because it's not just for you. It's for everyone else here as well. And there's a ripple effect that's created when we shift, whether you believe it or not, when we shift our own state, we shift the state around us. And this will illustrate how just by shifting the energy in the room, in the chat, we can shift ourselves, but we can shift other people. And that's how we start to get into that new way of thinking that can, that can create the conditions to thrive. Thank you so much what you're sharing in here. Uh, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my family, all the amazing people I've met. I'm grateful to my fabulous mobility scooter. Great news, Laura. So great to hear. Giving your freedom back. Grateful for my curiosity. Jennifer's grateful for her lovely supportive son. Trish, I'm, I'm grateful as a, uh, as a carer every day that I'm, I'm mobile. Grateful uh, for my mother. Grateful for my friends, the small freedoms of life. Grateful for being alive now. Grateful for people, grateful for I can breathe really well, grateful for helping others, grateful for my family. Look at all this gratitude, this floods of gratitude. Oh, Lucy, birdsong, trees, soil, worms, friendly people, beautiful, beautiful of nature. <laughs> Alan's grateful the dog is licking his hair. Grateful for having inspirational people around you. Look, this gratitude is contagious. And by the way, if you couldn't think of anything of your own, steal someone else's. It's not stealing. <laughs> it's sharing it's sharing see something in the comments have a look in the chat find something for yourself if you couldn't find something for yourself look harder it's there trust me it's just going deeper it's going deeper to find that that energy within you because when we feel it you know i was almost moved to tears in an instant i should have allowed myself to go there it's only my pride goodness when we feel that we can do anything when we feel that gratitude, the fear just disappears. The rest of the world, you know, when there's in that moment of Zach watching him in the bath, anything could have been happening. I wouldn't have noticed anything else other than that moment of joy there, my wife and my son in this magic moment. You can't take those moments away. So let's recap. Let's recap. Three things that we can do, three simple ways that you can go about thriving during this time of uncertainty. Number one, take control of your focus. We're always focusing, we're always able to control what we focus on, what it means and what we do. Common sense, but not common practice. Invest in yourself, invest in ideas, invest in projects, invest in learning, invest in education, take courses, read books, do the artist way. <laughs> yeah, come and join us in the new year when we do that. Join an inspirational community. Build a support network of your own. All these things are simple steps. It's three things. Control your focus, invest in yourself, and build a support network. But three things that most people are not doing right now. Three things that most people who are captivated by fear rather than excitement and inspiration and opportunity. They're three very simple things. But uncommon practice. Common sense, but uncommon practice. Now, the good news is you're in the right place because at Elevate, we want to help you to do these things. It's simple. These things are simple, but not easy. We want to make it easy for you. So there's a number of things that we obviously do. Those of you familiar with what we do at Elevate, we create content to, yes, help you make sense of the world. But going into the new year, we will continue to make content that addresses the most important issues that we're facing and answer it, asking the questions most seem unwilling to ask. That was the tagline in the pandemic podcast. We'll continue to do that. But I'm ever exploring ways how we can, we can navigate the issues of the world that we're facing without falling into that fear, uncertainty and doubt. How can we elevate beyond those issues to look at them as they are, not worse than they are, so we can start to understand those problems, witness those problems, but not be consumed by them. So next year, you can expect new types of content from us where we're going to explore different ways that we can stay informed. One of my, one of our, 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 our fans, one of our, someone, uh, Ellie McKay, I was on her podcast on, on a mission. It's a great podcast. I had the opportunity of being on her show twice. She's a big fan of what we do. Um, and I talked to her a lot and she said, Dan, you know, you were, you were a lifeline for me during the pandemic, but I'm going to be honest with you, Dan. And she, I won't do a Scottish accent. She's got this wonderful accent. 
She says, now I want to tap out, you know, like you, I want to tune out from constant negative news. I just want to get enough. I just want to get a small dose to understand what's going on, the minimum viable dose of news to stay informed. Because we know that, you know, a lot of the world right now is, you know, people talk about awake, uh, this awakening and being awake to what's happening. To me, that's just having your eyes open. You know, wake, you wake up in the morning, your eyes open, life comes alive. When we awaken to the world, it's actually to see the world as it is. It's what we've been talking about all the way through here, but many people have their eyes shut. So what we want to do is find the content that just is enough so that you can see what's happening, but you don't become consumed by it. I'm excited about exploring different ways that we can communicate information so you can stay informed, but you don't become consumed by the negativity. We're going to try and find an elevate way of communicating these world issues, these important issues. But more importantly, in the new year, we're going to start creating content that helps, helps you live your best life. Ultimately, elevate at its essence is to rise up. And at its core, at its core, Elevate is about human flourishing. It's about how do we thrive? That word thrive is what, 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 what Elevate was always meant to be. Elevate pre-existed the pandemic podcast. It pre-existed 2020. It got put on hold for two years, but it's here now. And as we go into new year, we're, we're going to continue to explore the issues that we're uh, tackling because all of those things impact upon human flourishing. You know, the impositions on our freedoms and our rights, these all impact on our ability to flourish. But it's there are things, as we talked about tonight, within our own hands, within our own grasp, that we can do in order to expand our own potential and start to awaken to our own potential and realize it uh, and the changes that we can make. So we're gonna start creating content that directly helps you, whether it's helping you with your health, finding clarity about the, the, the path you wanna take in the world. A lot of people right now are asking me, what direction shall I go? What can I do to make a difference in the world? We wanna create content to help you answer those questions. We wanna help co to create content that helps you to live your best life and make a difference. But we're gonna continue to bring as well the most inspiring voices and the, the impactful change makers. I've got this idea of a, a series called The Architects of Change to feature those people who are out there making a difference, those change makers who are taking on these big systemic issues and making headway. So rather than just hearing the news about what's happening, we're hearing about the change as it happens. Because believe me, we aren't the only ones in the world tonight that's thinking about opportunity and change. Thank goodness. There are millions of us right now around the world thinking about how do we change the world for the better. And when we start to join the dots, when we start to form community, when we start to come together, those ideas spread and we start to form connections and collaborations and coalitions. So we're going to we're going to take every aspect of individual flourishing, social flourishing, and worldwide flourishing as well, because we've got to take care of the world we live in. Number two, courses. We launched our first course this year, education, investing in ourselves. We, learned our first, we launched our first course on helping to navigate the world of digital assets and changing finance. And this week, I interviewed Sam, who's the host of that course, give you a deep dive into some of the common myths and misunderstandings around digital assets um, and uh, crypto and all those things, blockchain. But we want to expand on that to develop uh, new courses that help you to develop new skills, gain new knowledge, but also to discover new opportunities in this changing world. You know, those of you who've looked at the Navigating Digital Assets course, some of you are now investing in projects that could actively help support some of those changes that we've talked about, which is fantastic to hear. But we can invest in our own health or our own ability to take control of our finances or to start a business or to start an organization that contributes to change. We want to create content and courses that enable you to or empower you to really make a difference within our Elevate Learning Hub. And then ultimately, the last thing is our community. We've invested in our private community, our online community platform this year that houses all of our content and, uh, and courses. It's, it's, uh, there's over 5,000, nearly 6,000 members now inside our community. Uh, and we're developing an uplifting space where... You can join the conversation with like-minded people, meet your new peer group, but ultimately connect with other uplifting, inspirational people that we've talked about tonight. People who see the world differently, people who are looking to be part of the change rather than a victim of what's, uh, what's happening out in the world. We've hosted over 20 events this year, online and offline. Next year, we want to expand that. We want to provide more opportunities for you to, to learn, to grow, to connect, both online and yes, in person. We want to get out in the communities as much as possible, not just in the UK, but around the world. Ultimately, we want to empower people to become active participants in change by providing you with access to ideas, tools, resources, and strategies that ultimately enable you to take charge of your own destiny and help you on your path to making the difference that you care about in the world. And that difference, no matter how big or small, it could be living your best life for your family, it could be showing up every day with a as a role model, as an inspirational person, because we don't need a title to lead. 
How we lead is what we do every single day. We're building a movement, really. What we're trying to do is build a movement of empowered citizens who are willing to step up and do what it takes to find solutions. And we do that by firstly helping you to rise up, helping you to rise up and become the leader you were born to be. The story I told you tonight, my own elevation, that's where the brand came from. It used to be, we, used to call, we used to be called Unstoppable Media, which was all about me breaking through my limits. Now it's about elevation. It's a different energy. It's about how do we rise beyond? How do we become the leaders we were born to be? Because leaders do not require a title. We don't need a special role to lead. We can all lead in our own lives by being the change we want to see. How we show up every day is how we lead change. If we want a healthier, happier, more peaceful, more loving world, then it begins with us taking responsibility for our own health, our own happiness, our own inner peace, our own relationships, our own prosperity. And by doing so, believe it or not, this is how we can shift a culture. Because when more and more people take responsibility for making a difference in their own lives and living with greater health, happiness, and peace, well, guess what? We start to change the, the game entirely. We start to create a culture that is happy, that is healthy, and peaceful, and loving, and prosperous. By becoming an example ourselves, we inspire others. We inspire others around us to step up and also to become leaders that they were born to be. Because it's easy to blame other people for the state of the world, whether it's the politicians or the elites. And whilst all of that has some truth, of course, the real truth is the future is in each one of our hands to create. So firstly, we're here to help you to rise up and become the leader you were born to be. And the second thing we're here to do is to bring change makers together to develop solutions to the world's most pressing issues and to help support those change makers, to help become a catalyst for change, to help them become the best they can be in forging a path ahead. And to help us achieve all of these things, we do need your help. We've launched a brand new uh, supporter program, um, which I'd love to tell you about. Uh, and I'd like to invite you to join our supporter program tonight. So we've reached an awful lot of people with our content in the last two years, over 15 million downloads in total. We've hosted a lot of impactful events. We've built a powerful community and we wouldn't be able to do any of what we've done. We've got a small team, myself, Felicity and Dan, who's on the call and Lucy Rose and others who have contributed to, uh, to, to our success, Patrick Cannon and uh, Marianne Ebody and uh, you know, over 20, volunteer, uh, 20 volunteers last year on the Pandemic Podcast, Alan Deacon is on the call, other, uh, you know, we've got uh, many of our other volunteers maybe here tonight as well, um, but uh, I can't see you all by name, so hello and thank you if you are here. But we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the kind support of our donors and generous community members, so we've developed what we think is an amazing supporter program, which we hope will help you to uh, help us expand on the work that we've begun and help us to bring more conversations and content like this into 2023. So there's a number of things that we will offer you as a supporter. Number one, the opportunity to be part of an inspired community. Meet your new peer group within our online community. The opportunity to participate in all of our monthly events and guest Q&As like this. To take part in our courses and get discounted access on all of the learning things, the, the learning opportunities that we're going to create for you next year access to all of our content, our entire back catalogue, the censored content and all, all of our classes and events that we've recorded to date, all available to you in one library, access to all of our podcast episodes, and now the opportunity to join us live uh, as we record. And next year, we're going to bring some amazing guests. We've got conversations coming up with in all manner of, uh, of, of, of major voices, people that have challenged the status quo over the last couple of years, but also aspirational voices outside of this space that can really help you to elevate your own life and help us to elevate humanity. So what I'd like to do now is just take a moment to share and, and exactly what's uh, available to you inside our community and just show you behind the scenes within our uh, private community. So I'm gonna share my screen to show you uh, inside our private network so that you can get a sense of what our members have been experiencing over the last couple of years. So I, I'm just gonna, Bring this up on my screen for you now so you can see behind the scenes and give you a little tour of our private online community. So let's see how this works. Bear with me a minute. Last time I did this, it didn't work. Can someone give me the, Felicity, can you give me a thumbs up? Give me a thumbs up if you can see uh, our community. Thank you. And can you see my mouse moving? This is the critical point. Do you see the mouse moving as well? 
Yes, because last time I did this, no one could see what I was clicking on. So this is our private community. If you're already a member of our community, you'll be familiar with this. This is the Elevate community. You'll see here the main feed. Uh, lots of people introducing themselves, um, you know, new members joining today, saying hello, uh, people uh, welcoming each other. Uh, you can see all the different things we've got going on, the different polls we've got happening, um, some of the other events we've got coming up, the Trailblazing Systemic Change in January, and then all of the conversation with our members, all of our content, you can access this entire private feed. And unlike Facebook, we're not going to trap you with algorithms. It's all uh, just the, the content from our members. You can, you can get involved in the conversation. You can find out about all the things that are happening within the Elevate ecosystem here. We have an announcements uh, section, this entire community section where... We have our member discussion. We have real-time chat where our members can chat with each other. And if, if they're online, they can talk uh, live now. Uh, so if you want to talk after this event, you can go and join the chat room there. Um, all our member introductions, so you can get to know each other, where you're all from. And by the way, you can also see uh, the members near you if you choose to put your location in there. So I can find right now all the people near me in Bristol. You can meet like-minded people near you. When I move to Bournemouth, I'll be able to see all the new people near me in Bournemouth. And then you've got our podcast library. So really there's three key sections. You've got the community section where you connect with each other and join the conversation. You've got the podcast section where you can uh, join our live conversations tomorrow at five. Again, this is only going to be available in the community. We've got a conversation about the children's um, uh, vaccines, discovering the, uh, the data around that. Obviously we can't broadcast that live, it'll be censored. So we've got a private conversation tomorrow here inside the community. You can access live at five o'clock. That's only available to community members. All of the interviews and content that we create, we haven't got any, uh, we, we're coming up to the Christmas break, but in the new year, you'll have all of the content available here before it goes live to the public, before we premiere it to the public. So any new interviews, any new solo content, you'll be able to come and see all of that before it's live. You can see our entire back catalog uh, from our most recent episodes here to our most popular, plus the entire library of everything we've ever done, <laughs> all in one place, categorized. You can see all of our censored content. And for those of you who are a fan of the Pandemic Podcast, all of the, a lot of this content was stuff that was lost when we were deplatformed off YouTube. We've restored it and got it all here. Um, it's like a time capsule for the last couple of years. We've got interviews with we've got Dr. Claire Craig's first ever interview. We were the first uh, show that she appeared on. We've got Nick Hudson. We've got Pierre Corey, Rob Kurt, Mike Eden, Peter McCullough coming up, um, Astro Truckleberger. Ryan Aformic, you know, this is literally a Dell Big Tree. It's, it's literally like a, a time capsule for the last two years. This is, none of this stuff is available anywhere else. This is all this is all censored on our public facing platforms. Uh, so you've got the censored content vault. And I hope I do hope that we don't have to keep putting stuff in here. But I do hope that one day free speech will, 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 will survive. And I hope we can play a part in helping that happen. But we have contingencies. We have this available to you. Then we have the events section, so you can see all of our upcoming events. Obviously, tonight we've got, uh, this probably got into the past section now, but we've got tonight's event, all our previous events in here. Um, you've got our uh, previous events all uh, by category in here, the, the different classes we've had, the different Q&A sessions with our guests. We've had Eric Edmeads, we've had um, Charles Eisenstein, we had Jay Bhattachara, we've had David Shara Lambos, Matthias Desmet, that's a game changer, that one. If you haven't seen that one, that's that's available there for you. We had Helena Norbog Hodge, we've had stuff on permaculture, we've had an online drum circle with Maria, one of our own members, that was an amazing event. Uh, so all of our events here, and there's more to come. And then lastly, you've got our courses section, which is where next year we'll be producing a whole range of new courses. And um, we've got our first there, Navigating Digital Assets. So there's this whole neatly packaged community for you. It's a great place to connect with each other, access the community, join the conversations, access all of our content, participate in the events and uh, enjoy our learning hub. Uh, so this is all now live within the community. Uh, in terms of what our supporters say, we've got some lovely testimonials. Joining Elevate helped me feel less isolated in a world where asking questions has become increasingly difficult, if not vehemently frowned upon. Knowing there are thousands of concerned people like myself who are ready to join forces to create a stronger, fairer society, I now have hope for the future. Wonderful case study. Uh, with the opportunity to meet many highly educated and experienced guests and the culture within the community of feeling supported not only by Dan and his team, but also other members. I would strongly recommend anyone who wishes to join forces to create positive change in society and for our future generations to take a look at what Elevate is achieving. Very kind uh, comments. Now, up until now, the community in its early stage uh, release has been um, open to all. 
Um, but now going into 2023, from the 1st of January, it's going to be only available to our supporters. And we're working with our existing community on that basis. Um, but to become a supporter, uh, we'd love you to join our movement, our Elevate movement. You can join our Elevate community and take advantage of all of our community features. You can access every single event that we do online next year, free of charge. You can access all of our content live, join our Q&As, join uh, our community discussions, our community sessions, meet your peer group, uh, get focused and inspirational content and help help you thrive going into the new year. You can join from as little as five pounds per month. And I wanna show you how to do that because I know not everyone can contribute five pounds right now. So uh, we've made it easy for everyone to join us. Um, so if you go to weareelevate.org forward slash supporter, you can see here by joining the supporter program, you get immediate access to our online community, exclusive content and online events. And you have an option, you have three different options. You get the exact same benefits, no matter which option you choose. We, we haven't staggered it in any way, uh, but we recognize people have different abilities to pay. So we've created a pay what you can model. Uh, and we've got a top tier here of 15 pounds, which we call the pay it forward tier. Uh, we invite those of you who have the capacity to do so to pay a little extra, which enables us to gift membership to those who can't contribute financially, because we know it's a tough time out there right now. We've tried to uh, create an entry level that's accessible to everyone at five pounds, but you can choose which level you join. We've got lots and lots of people joining us on the 15 pounds per month uh, to help other people out because as you'll see here, what we said is if you, if you can't contribute right now, we've created a pay it forward program. So when you click here, you have the opportunity to either make a one-off donation to at least contribute something if you can, or you can join at a lower price of three pounds per month, just pay a little less, but still receive all the same benefits. Or if you literally cannot contribute right now and just need a helping hand, you can get free access to the community, no questions asked. As I said, some of our supporters pay a little extra to help that to happen. They help us do that because ultimately, as I mentioned, we're no longer a voluntary organization. We've got four team members who uh, I uh, have the privilege of paying each month. Uh, we've got lots of software, uh, including our community software. We've got all the tech to produce the podcast. And, you know, right now it's a kind of recording in the back of a room type approach, whereas next year we really want to step things up, do lots more physical events, increase the quality of our content. And our supporter program is really, the reason we call it supporter program is we, we want to entice people who want to support what we're doing. That's why we call it the supporter program. It's like a donation program. Many of you have donated over the last couple of years. It really helped us do what we do with, with the pandemic podcast. Uh, but now we want to take it forward into 2023 with some real momentum. So it's our hope that some of you tonight will decide to join us. Um, the private community I showed you is only going to be available to uh, our paid supporters next year. Um, so you'll get full access to the community immediately. Once you join the supporter program, you better log in and come and introduce yourself here and make your first post. Uh, and it's my hope that some of you will make the decision tonight to join us, uh, join us inside the community and uh, support our mission to elevate humanity. I'm gonna come back to our slides now to finish up for today. Um, oh, and what I believe is this, right now each of us has the opportunity to decide three simple things. Who are we gonna become in this time? How are we gonna show up in the world? And what are we gonna do to contribute to the planet, our community, our own family, and our own life. No matter which order you take that, your own life, the family, or the community, or the planet, whatever you choose to focus on, I believe we all are being called right now to elevate ourselves in order to elevate humanity. And it's down to us to decide which direction we will go as a species, as a planet. But the important thing I want you to remember from everything we've covered tonight is that you have a choice, you have a decision. And in every moment of the day, we're making decisions that can alter the trajectory of our life. So my question to you is, are you going to rise up and help to lead the change? Or are you gonna be one of those who go with the crowd? It takes real courageous leadership and fortitude to stand up against the tide in the face of great uncertainty. And I know that we're in a room full of courageous leaders today. Leadership to me is about mobilizing people to create a force that can help us to catapult or leap into a better future despite all the uncertainty in the world. There are millions of people in this world and it would be my wish that millions of people could have been part of our conversation that we're having tonight. 
We may not influence millions of people next year, but we certainly will give it our best shot. What we're really trying to do is build a movement to help elevate humanity by empowering people to live their best life and to make a difference in the world. And we'd love to welcome you to our community. And I do hope that you will choose to join us. And I really want to thank you for your time, your attention, your focus, your inspiration, your energy, your gratitude, your participation in tonight's session. I hope you found it valuable, inspirational. I hope there's been something that you're able to take away and apply to your own life. And if you choose to join us inside the community, it'd be my absolute pleasure to welcome you. And uh, I look forward to taking the next step with you into 2023. And I hope that you'll join us in elevating humanity and enriching the world.